Hey everybody, Steve here. Welcome to video eight in my Race Day Quads Bardwell F7 flight controller series. Yes, video eight. We've come a long way to get this far and uh, we're going to wrap things up, I think, in this video. But uh, real quick, let me splash up the playlist so that you can see the titles of the previous seven videos uh, in the event that maybe this is the first video you bumped into and you might want to go back and review some of the others. So here they are. Now here we are in video eight. I'm going to do my final checklist. And then at the end of the video, I'll give you some of my initial thoughts on this thing. All right. Without further ado, let's get going. So let's talk final flight checklist. All right. Let's go all the way back up to setup. My quad is kind of cattywampus. I'm going to go ahead and put him flat down on the table like so. He's flat now. Now we're assuming that the table is level, but it's kind of level. I'm going to calculate the accelerometer. And then I'm going to go ahead and reset his Z-axis like so. And then, of course, I'm going to go through this routine and make sure that I didn't hose anything up. We're good. We're good in all shapes and forms and stuff. We're good there. So I'm happy with that. Next, I'm going to go to ports. I know my ports are good. I'm going to go to my configuration. My configuration. I'm just double checking quad X. I'm going to check my motors in a second. Eight and eight. Serial bus, S bus. These are the things that I like to have checked. Telemetry, air mode, OSD, dynamic. Those two. These guys right here, everything's good there. And this is something that I went into way more detail in a previous video, but I'm just kind of double checking them. Everything here is good. So power and battery, all that we've set up previously. Fell safe, we set up previously. PID tuning, we skipped. All right, so the receiver tab, I want to check my channel one, which is roll. 2000, 1000, 1500, pitch. 2000, 1000. 1500, my yaw, 1000, 2000, 1500, and my throttle, 1000, 2000, and there we are. So there's my first four channels. All right, so my aux one is going to be my channel five, and all right, and channel two is going to be my flight mode. All right, and aux three, which is going to be my channel seven, is my buzzer. And you can hear with the uh, with the quad actually plugged in, you can actually hear the ESCs beep as they will in the field if you lose your quad. All right, so there's that. Cool. All right, moving on to modes. All right, we kind of did this, but let me go ahead and just check arm. Arm is good. You can see it move over here. All right, we are currently in angle mode. Let's see if I can do it this way here. There's horizon mode. Acro mode. Acro mode does not have a block on this sheet because it is the default mode. And my beeper. Buzzer. Yep. Buzzer. All right, so everything's good here. I'm going to save just because I'm used to saving. For adjustments, that's uh, advanced thing that we won't mess with right now. Servos is something that I've never messed with before. The motors. Let's let's check the motors again. All right, props off. Props off. Props off. Props off. Let's go ahead and plug it in. And I'm going to go ahead and uh, say that I understand. Motor one, better be going clockwise. It is. Motor two, better be going counterclockwise. Motor three, better be down here, counterclockwise. And motor four, better be up here and it better be going clockwise. That's clockwise. So all four motors are working. Just hit the master here for a second. Everybody's good. And boom, like that. That's the motors. The OSD. All right, so video transmitter, this is all set up because I'm using smart audio. Uh, this is going to be a separate video, and that's it. This thing's ready for flight. Now, one thing that you, will, that you might have issues with, if you go back to setup. All right, so one thing that uh, I, I want to do is check to make sure that I'm not going to have any um, problems while arming. So I can come back to the setup screen right here, arming disable flags. I only have one flag, and that's MSP. MSP means that I'm uh, attached via USB cable to Betaflight, so it won't, it won't arm. All right, but that's my only flag, so I'm good there. So if I go ahead and disconnect, and now I try to arm, my motors will run. So I like to take the uh, quad, put it in angle mode, and pick it up, and I can get an idea by the resistance in the motors that things are working the way they should be working. Go ahead and 
get that guy off. This thing is ready for props and a test spin. Very exciting. Inaugural flight. It's like butter. How about that? Looks good. Good? You got it? Yep. It's windy. So here we are. It's uh, a day later and I've had a chance to fly this thing in a larger space than my front yard. Um, as I've said many times in this video series, um, my perspective is that from someone who's just a little bit past uh, beginner myself. Uh, this is only my second F7 build and I definitely don't purport to be any kind of authority when it comes to flying these things. Um, I'm not really in any kind of position to give you a full in-depth hardcore comparison video like what you might find on other channels. However, um, I feel that where I am in my learning curve allows me to be in touch with what absolute beginners need in a build that is this involved. And for the beginners out there, here's what might be important to you. First, this is an easy flight controller to solder on. Uh, the pads are gigantic compared to other boards, which really, really makes it easier. Um, and that is a, a big bone of contention with, with beginners, as soldering is probably the single hardest uh, part of the whole build. Number two is the directions. The directions were written by Bardwell, and you know he's definitely an authority in the field, and he's got a solid grasp of the English language. And if you don't think that's a big deal, then you've probably never tried a build that was just directly translated from Chinese to English. Not very useful. So, is this a great choice for beginners on their first build? I'd have to give that a resounding yes. And let's be clear, I purchased everything that you see in this video series myself. I was not paid to hype a single component in the series. Um, I don't know Joshua Bardwell, and I've had no contact with him whatsoever. And I very seriously doubt he knows who I am. So Bardwell is in a unique position to be a hardware designer because he's got so much brand awareness online. Now, regardless of whether you're a huge fan of his or you just simply think he's an annoying egomaniac, those are just opinions. But let me share with you some facts. Fact number one, the dude knows what he's talking about. He's had enough time and exposure to products over the years to build an incredible database of knowledge of what makes a great product. Fact two, he built a flight board that is clear, it's jam-packed with features, and it's easy to work on for beginners. Fact three, his documentation is unsurpassed. He's done this thing enough times to know where the pitfalls are and what points truly need addressing. So that's really enough to make the purchase of this flight controller uh, a no-brainer. Um, if you're on the cusp of getting into this hobby, there is no better time than the present. Um, I have waded through dozens, if not hundreds of sources to get this far and make this build series a reality and get the darn thing to fly. And my hope is that I've done a good job compiling all this information into one place so that the people who come after me have a much easier time with their first quadcopter built. So I'm wrapping it up here. I'm Steve. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please share it with others. Uh, I try to be clear and concise and explain things on a level that beginners like myself can understand. I hope you got benefit out of the video. And if you did, please subscribe to the channel and hit that bell to get notification of future videos. Till then, I'll see you in the next one.